the Yak 50, as well as the Yak 55. Super the water. He's just got the landing gear extended to show you the slow speed capability of the yak as he waggles the wings just a little bit. Let's give him a wave as he goes by. What an outstanding job once again from Gordon. Hello, my name is Gordon Price. Uh, I'm from Meaford, Ontario and I'm flying in the Canadian International Air Show. Uh, I'm uh, 80 years old, about to turn 81, and I'm flying a Yak-50. Actually, this is the prototype Yak-50, which was built in 1972 by the Yakovlev Design Bureau in Moscow. This, is, this airplane flew in 1972, three years before any of the production models, and they built 341 of the production models, used as an advanced trainer. I first flew uh, the Yak-50 in 1982 in Spitzerberg, Austria at a World Aerobatic Championship when the Russian team offered me the uh, opportunity to fly the airplane. They flew my airplane, I flew their airplane, we had a good time and I remembered the airplane. So when I saw this one was for sale in 2011, uh, I went and bought it. I've been flying it in air shows for the last 10 years and uh, it is a superb display airplane. It's big, it has a unique sound and it can do all the maneuvers and it can do it in a very tight area. I have a smoke system on it, uh, 8 gallon smoke system which is, uh, injects oil into the exhaust and I also have uh, smoke grenades on the wingtips which operate for the first four minutes of the flight. See that beautiful smoke trail in the sky. This is Corvus oil or Telus 10 being injected into the exhaust of the aircraft. It has a high flash point and it just sort of smolders in the heat of the exhaust so that uh, those uh, smoke trails are produced so we can follow the aerobatics through the sky. It's also a bit of a safety uh, mechanism as well, especially for teams like the Northern Aero Stars or the Northern Stars Aero Team. Okay, Bert Price holds hard on a step up into the sky he goes, holding that vertical line right about here, and he's going to pull over the top, he'll hold it right there in the middle of the and get the great back in World War One. He holds the aircraft again, then upright, straight into the sky, rolling a quarter of a turn, so we're looking at the top side of the Yak-50, right about here, he pulls back the power, and tail slides the Yak-50. There's the hammerhead, folks, because these Eastern Bloc uh, engines turn the opposite direction to North American aircraft like the Pit Special. You'll always see the Pit Looking now at the far side, here is the first Luxembourg, folks, by Gordon Price and the Yak 50. Gordon's life in the air is as good as it gets. His flying started in an Iraqa champ in the summer of 1958 in Oshawa, Ontario. After receiving an Air Cadet Scholarship, the Royal Canadian Air Force became his home in 1960 through 66. He did his training on the Chipmunk, then the Harvard, and then finally the CT-133 Shooting Star, or Silver Star. 
Operational training began on the F-86 and he ended up flying the F-104 Starfighter, as I said, earlier today. So two years as a nuclear strike pilot on 422 Squadron. When he moved over to Air Canada, he flew such... I spent uh, six years in the RCAF. I flew the Starfighter uh, as a nuclear strike aircraft in Germany in the 19, 1963 to 1966. Uh, I then left the Air Force, joined Air Canada, and flew for Air Canada, flew all their different airplanes over a period of 36 years and retired 20 years ago off the 747. I flew my first air show in 1976. And I've been flying air shows uh, ever since. Towards the water. Folks, what do you think of Gordon Price so far in the F 50? display today I will have loops, rolls, snap rolls, variations of rolls, flat spins, lumps of axe, tail slides, and uh, uh, some very tight turns. I'll be pulling 7G and pushing probably four and a half. iteration of the single-seater Yak-18 and uh, was designed by Sergei Yakolov, the son of Yakolov himself. Yak-50 was an outstanding success and the 1976 World Aerobatic Championships took first, second, and third in the men's championships, first to fifth in the women's, as well as taking overall men's and women's team prizes. Now there are approximately 66 Yak-50s left in the world. You're looking at one of two currently flying in Canada. The other one, as Gord slips back down through his own smoke in another beautifully executed tail slide, the other Yak-50 lives on the west coast in Abbotsford, British Columbia. Okay, folks, I'm not going to do that one secret, but I purposely left out. 